Good morning. Welcome to Pulaski Wesleyan Church. We're glad you're here. I think we've got every, all the buds worked out. We've got it streaming in two places now, so we should be good to go. We're glad you all made it out to, to worship with us today. Um, just a few quick announcements. Um, Tuesday mornings, we have our Bob Band of Brothers Bible study. It meets at 6 a.m. We have been doing it via Zoom, but we'll be back in the foyer this week. Uh, Pastor Craig will be here this Tuesday. He expects to be here between 1 and 2. He does need unloading some stuff into the uh, storage units down by the uh, bus garage. So we're looking for volunteers. You can either see me or contact Melanie at the office. We'll give updates as to when he's actually here. Keith and Donna Miller. Keith, raise your hand. Uh, they're hosting a, a Bible study in, in Orwell Tuesday evenings that started last week, so you guys already missed out if you weren't there last week. Check your bulletin. It's got more details in there for you. If you're a parent of a youth, uh, grades 6 through 12, uh, this on July 8th, Wednesday, at 6.30 at the church, we'll be having a meeting. Pastor Craig wants to meet with you so you can get to know him. If you cannot make it live, we can have Zoom available. You just need to contact Melanie at the office so she can send you the link. If you have volunteered for youth in the past or would like to volunteer to help out with the youth, on Thursday the 9th, he will be meeting as well at 6.30. Anybody interested in helping with the youth, please join. And Saturday, July 11th, is our next men's breakfast, 9 a.m. Guys, come on out, food fellowship, and a short message. And finally, we won't be passing the plates again this week, but you can uh, drop it in the offering as you go out. Also, if you're watching online, you can uh, go to, you can mail to the church office. You can go to PulaskiWesleyan.org backslash give or text give and the amount to 315-277-7720. All right, everyone, we're still social distancing, so wave. Good morning. If you'd like to stand, we'll open in prayer and then uh, have a little time of worship. Lord, we thank you so much that we have the opportunity to gather together here. We, we thank you for the freedom to meet here. We thank you, Lord, for the option to meet online. We, we pray for uh, all of God's people, wherever they may be, Lord. Uh, we pray, Lord, for those that uh, that are sick this morning, those that uh, are fighting the, the current pandemic. But, Lord, we know that there's other needs, and we, we ask that uh, we not uh, lose sight of those and that we take care of those as, as you would have us do. Again, we thank you for the great day. We thank you for your people. We ask that, uh, that you open their minds for the message, to feed on the word this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. We bow down and worship him now. How great, how awesome is he. And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with his Stand and lift up our hands For the joy of the Lord is our strength We bow down and worship Him now How great, how awesome is He And together we sing Everyone sing Is filled with his glory. 
It's the anthem of the Lord's renown. And together we sing. Everyone sing. Holy is the Lord God Almighty. The earth is filled with His glory. You are 
Now, I've learned where the power button is. <laughs> if only I had put that in my, my knowledge into experience a bit earlier than this. <laughs> So I know for sure that there are some of you who uh, were singing that song with all honesty, that you surrendered all. I know it. And I know very well that there are some of you who are just downright liars. <laughs> Do you know why I say that? Because I find myself, this, that we were just singing, I surrender all. Well, frankly, a lot of the time, I really ought to be singing, I surrender most. I surrender some, some to you, my blessed Savior. I surrender some. Uh, okay? I mean, that's all is, is a pretty, you know, big word. So uh, just, just to say this, I know that there are some who really are, and bless you, thank you, my brothers and sisters. That's why, you know, we need each other. We, as iron sharpens iron, one person sharpens another as we interact together. Uh, but let's be honest. Let's be sure we're honest with ourselves and honest before the Lord. If you find yourself today that, you know, you've, maybe you ought to have been singing, I surrender most, some, whatever, be honest. But remember this, that the Lord delights in honesty before him. Even as we go to prayer, uh, I... I know that for myself, I, I think I want to surrender all. I, th I know it's the right thing to do. I know that that's what will really bring me blessing. I know that God wants us to be in surrender to him. I know that. I know that from the scriptures. I know that from my experience. I know that from interacting with you. I know that's true. Yes, we know that. And our prayer is, oh God, make us be people who live... <laughs> wanting to to be honest people yes who desire that yeah well let's look to the lord in prayer this morning and just be honest with him okay you go ahead and, and start in your own heart tell the lord whether if you desire you surrender all or want to surrender all there it is oh god you know our hearts <laughs> the psalmist said before a word is on my tongue you know it completely you hem me in behind and before you're familiar with all my ways you know my going out my coming in my standing up my, my sitting down you, you know all these things about us you are God you are God and we praise you that you have identified yourself as the good shepherd of sheep you're honest with us. We know that we are dumb sheep. We know that we go astray. We know this about ourselves. But we know that you are the good shepherd and that you love your sheep. We know from the scriptures that you have loved us with an everlasting love. That you have loved us as individuals. You've loved nations of people. You loved people groups. You love. We don't love, but you love. Or I should say, we love, but only because you loved us first. Thank you for the truth of your scriptures. Thank you that you are such a great God. Thank you for proving your love to us. You didn't just tell us. You proved it by sending your son Jesus to die in our place. Hallelujah. Ah, oh, thank you, O oh God. Thank you, O oh God. We sang another song, O oh Lord, righteousness and holiness and faithfulness. And this is what we want to be. Well... It's what we want to want to be. We know that it's what you want of us. So we ask you this morning, O oh God, that you would, in our hearts, you would form us. In our minds, you would transform us by the power of your word, by the power of your spirit. Transform our thinking, that we would think right thoughts towards you and about you and towards each other. And then conform our wills to yours, O oh God. Conform us, shape us to want the things that you want. To desire the things that please you. Oh, Father, thank you. Father, there are so many concerns around us right now. You know, our nation seems to be in turmoil and uproar. Uh, I don't know 
I only stop and think sometimes, what did the people of Israel think when their nation was in uproar? They had, uh, nations of peoples had been in turmoil for years. But as we trace history, we know that you are the God who cares. You're the God who moves the hearts of men. The scripture says that you turn the heart of a king like, like a water course, you, like a river. You, you, you pick the channels that they should go in. You are the God who's sovereign over all, and we praise you. Although we don't know the future, we praise you that you do. Although we know you desire for us as, as a people, as a church, to repent of our sins and to follow after you. You talked about righteousness exalting a nation. Oh God, bring us to be righteous people. Cause us to want to be righteous people before you, to living before you in a way that pleases you so that it would exalt the nation and that many others would turn their hearts towards you. Thank you, O oh Lord. Father, many, many concerns in, uh, represented in the hearts of your people this morning, but we thank you that even though there, we're not saying them all out loud, you're amazing and you know the concerns of your people. And so we agree about these things together. Make us a holy people. Make us a righteous people. Turn us that we might be people who bring your message of hope and salvation to the world around us. That we would live righteous lives and so doing, the, the nation would be exalted. Thank you, O oh God. We ask these things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'm going to... Uh, I'm privileged to... Uh, have the pastor ask me if I would fill in in the pulpit today. Of course, that's, that's why I have this wire in the earpiece. So I'm very thankful. Uh, I, I just encourage you to, to pray. Continue to pray as you, you pray for the pastor. I just was thinking about that, that, uh, you know, it's a, it's a challenge for a pastor to, to be attentive to the needs of the people, you know, in the church, people who are in hospitals or in nursing homes or, you know, people who had accidents and so forth, have spiritual needs, uh, financial needs, spiritual needs, being attentive and trying to shepherd a flock. And then uh, in a, a Sunday morning, doing an eight o'clock service and then doing a 10 o'clock service. And then in his case, you know, he was also doing the online service and, uh, and he's on the, the board of directors, I guess, up at uh, Shazy Camp up in uh, upstate New York, the Wesleyan Camp. And so that's where he is now. He and Susan are up there. Uh, wow, he's got a lot of responsibility. <laughs> and uh, we've all had a responsibility at times and have felt overwhelmed at times. I'm not saying he's feeling overwhelmed. I don't know. I haven't talked to him about that. But I'm just saying, let's thank you for for remembering him in prayer and just lifting him up before the Lord that the Lord would grant him strength and wisdom and prudence and, and discernment and energy uh, and all these things. Thank you, my brothers and sisters. He asked me if I... Uh, well, he said that he was planning on uh, preaching on righteousness. Donna, what were the three things he asked me to pray for, to preach on? Oh, righteousness, grace, and forgiveness. And because I couldn't remember the grace and forgiveness part, I just ended up thinking, oh, I'll preach on righteousness. Is that okay? Righteousness, grace, and forgiveness. Uh, fabulous, fabulous uh, things, of course, to preach on. Uh, righteousness. What is righteousness? I mean, rightness? Right? You look it up in the dictionary, right? You get on... You look it up and it's uh, righteousness is moral, uh, moral rightness, moral uh, acuity. Uh, uh, we talk about God being righteous. Uh, we talk about Jesus being righteous. Uh, he wants us to be righteous. Again, what does that mean? Uh, righteous meaning uh, living in such a way that uh, is congruent with his standards. Uh, Anything else? God has called his people towards this righteousness for years. All since the beginning, we see in the scriptures. My experience with, uh, an, a, a, I guess, attempt at living a righteous life before the Lord when I was a teenager, I often ended up having 
uh, people say to me, oh yeah, holier than thou, Keith, you with your holier than thou attitude. You know, have you ever had that? Well, as a, as a, as a man now, I, I look back at that and I say, it's, it seems like there's either one of two reasons they did that. Either because uh, I really was trying to live a right life and they knew they were supposed to and weren't and were frustrated or jealous of me and so the only thing they could do is, you know, jab at me. Either that or uh, I had a judgmental attitude. And, uh, you know, I'm sort of trying to be right before the Lord, but it's like, Tuh, I'm righteous, but too bad you're not. And I don't think I had that. <laughs> no, uh, at times I think I did have that uh, attitude. Uh, but isn't it interesting? Sometimes when people, when we try to live, when we want to live a righteous life, sometimes even within the church we, we, we throw darts at each other. How ridiculous are we, you know? Uh, now, if you're, if you're confronting me because you see an attitude of arrogance, great, you confront me. You know, that, there's that, uh, I think it's a, it's a proverb, no, it's a psalm. In the Old Testament, the, uh, I think it's a psalm of David. He makes a statement, he says, let a righteous man rebuke me, and I won't, I won't uh, turn away from that. Let a righteous man beat me, as it were, or rebuke me. Because then he goes on to says, The kisses of an enemy may be many, but the wounds of a friend are faithful. So, Lord, let, 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 the righteous, let righteous people come and, and confront me, and, and I'll accept that. Because that's what the Lord wants from us, is humble hearts and to walk before each other in honesty and before him in honesty. So, righteousness, what is it? A good standing before God. There's... Uh, reminded of two verses that don't use the word righteousness, but plenty of scriptures do. But uh, I remember one time I was uh, preaching at a church and I uh, was uh, doing a recitation of the Sermon on the Mount and got to the point where it says, in the, uh, the last verse in chapter 5, Jesus says, therefore be holy, no, therefore be perfect, as your Father in heaven is perfect. And of course, and it goes on. And a woman came up to me after the service, just broken. She said, how can I be perfect? I mean, she was just so confronted by that. How can I be perfect? Well, that's a good question. How could we be perfect? The scripture says it, be perfect. As your father is perfect. There's a scripture that says, in this one, uh, in, uh, I think it's John, uh, no, James, James 1.15, although it does say in another place, it says this, Be holy as God is holy, for it is written, I am holy, says the Lord. Be holy because God is holy. What's holy? Set apart, perfect. I mean, just living a righteous, a righteous life. Wow. The point is, God has high expectations of us. I know, and you know, that in our flesh we cannot do that. But we can by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be holy and perfect and righteous. Today we're talking about righteousness. How do we measure righteousness? Oftentimes, unfortunately, we measure righteousness by kind of our outward actions. Well, I guess the outward actions show the inward heart, right? How do we do it? Well, uh, you know, golly, Chuck is on the board and he's on the missions committee and he leads the men's Bible study. Well, that guy, now there's a righteous guy. Because I see what he does on the outside. Do I know his heart? Not really. I, I sort of do, though. Only because of what I see on the outside and as we interact together, I get a sense for the man's heart. Do I really, do I as a human being really know his heart? No, I don't. Sometimes we go astray, even in the church. You know, we say, well, so-and-so is involved in such-and-such such a ministry. Well, they must, well, they're really a righteous person, right? Oh, uh, this person gives. Boy, you should see what they give to missions. Wow, they're really a righteous person. Uh, well, they have sung in the choir. They've been on the worship team. They've whatever. Well, that's a righteous person. So Sometimes we fall into that. 
with this uh, outward evaluation type stuff. Uh, we compare people. You know, that's, I, I, there was an illustration that uh, a guy used a lot of years ago at a camp that I had the privilege of serving at. And he brought up a stick, similar to this one. And then he said, you know, if this is the righteousness stick, where do you think you'd, you'd fall on this righteousness stick? You know, and then, and then he started asking questions. He said, okay, okay. So he said, uh, let's say, what about, uh, what about like, you know, where, where do I think Chuck, Chuck is on this righteousness stick? Oh, man, Chuck, where do you think you are on this righteousness stick? <laughs> this one, this one, this one. <laughs> so would this, tell, tell me when to stop. Yeah, I should ask your wife. All right, I, I'm, I'm putting Chuck right there. Okay, I'm putting Chuck right there. Where do you think the pastor would be? Well, come on now, he's the pastor. We can't possibly put him lower than Chuck. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> this is just in jest, of course. What? Yeah, we can. Yeah, we you can put him in. Well, you know, what do we do? We make comparisons, right? We say, oh, well, a, a pastor of a church, he must be pretty high on the righteous. Now, how high? I, I don't know. In a sense, we, you're, we hesitate to put the line because we haven't evaluated everybody yet. Because once I, say, once I put a line, then I say, okay, what about Billy Graham? And he goes, oh, well, you know, gee whiz, you know. I said, oh, what about the Apostle Paul? And he said, oh, oh well, you know. And so we keep, right, depending upon who we're looking at, you know, what about our, our, our governor? What about our, you know, our, our neighbors? What about our children? And, and, of course, then we say, oh, I better rub that out, and that's got to move to a different spot, and then this person's got to be here, and that person's got to be there. That's what we do for measuring righteousness. Question. One of these, you know, it's like the Sunday school. It's the Sunday school question, and remember this one? They, uh, the person says, the Sunday school teacher says, uh, Okay, now what's small and brown and furry and has a fluffy tail and jumps from tree to tree and hides nuts in the ground? And the little kid says, well, uh, it sounds like a squirrel, but it must be Jesus. <laughs> you know? Right? Because the answer, the answer to every Sunday school question must be Jesus, right? <laughs> but so we're making our comparisons here, right? Where does Jesus you know, where's Jesus on the, on the righteousness scale? Uh, okay. And, and, I've, and I've played with you here. You know, I've, I've, uh, I've jested with you because he's not on the scale. We, we, don't even, we don't even often stop, even as believers in Christ, we don't fully appreciate the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We think he goes on our little scale. But my assistants over here are bringing out another scale. And put that end right down here, Chuck, if you will. Right there, good. Yep. Nope. I'm going to do this now. Right there. And that'll stay. <laughs> that'll really stay now. The righteousness of Jesus Christ just blows us away. <laughs> if we're making comparisons, he's not... Your righteousness and my righteousness is nowhere near. Billy Graham's, Apostle Paul's righteousness, the rightness, the right standing before God, the perfection before the Almighty God. Jesus is not in a position where he even compares with us. Now, my verse for the day, <laughs> the verse for the day, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 20, verse 21. First Corinthians 5, 21 says this. God made him, Jesus, 
Okay? God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that we, through him, might become the righteousness of God. Now, what does that mean? I mean, you're, you're, yeah. God made Jesus Christ, who had no sin, he was perfect, perfect, no sin. But Christian doctrine teaches us that when Jesus Christ hung on that cross, he was bearing, he was carrying on himself the sin of the whole world. And not just of the people of that time. He was carrying the punishment of sin of all people of all time. Yours and mine. The sin I committed last week, the sin you committed last year, and the sin you may or may not commit next year. The sin I will commit next week. Not that we want to sin, of course. The sin of our grandchildren. The sin of our children. The sin of our parents and our grandparents. God made him who had no sin of his own become sin. He, he bore the sin when he was hanging on the cross. We ask the question, and again, this is, this is not new. I, this is basic Christian doctrine. We've talked about this before. But it's worth talking about again. <laughs> Why did God the Father turn his head away, turn his face away from Jesus when he hung on the cross? The scripture says he turned his face. Why? Because in the holiness of God, he could not look upon sin. At that instant, his son was bearing your sin and mine. And because God is holy, he wouldn't look on it. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that through him we might become the righteousness of God. It is amazing trans transaction. What an amazing transaction. I'm guessing that you find it very hard like I do to perceive yourself as being a righteousness of that. <laughs> and in and of ourselves, you are right. I'm right. Well, I can't be. You can't be. We cannot be righteous. <laughs> but think about what that scripture says. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that through him we might become the righteousness of God. Brothers and sisters, it's just dumbfounding that God would love you and me, us. The whole world. That scoundrel of a neighbor you have. That boss who treats you poorly. God would love the world that much that he would send his son to die in our place, that we have an opportunity to take on the righteousness of Christ. Oh my! Isn't that amazing? I do appreciate... I do appreciate that song. I, I was uh, commenting about it earlier, that... Uh, that song about the righteousness and the holiness. And I, I mentioned to, uh, to the early service today uh, that phrase, uh, there's, there's the, the first phrase, righteousness, it's what I long for, righteousness is what I need, righteousness is what you want from me. I absolutely agree with two-thirds of that song. I agree that that's what he wants from me. 
I agree that that's what I need. But there are times that it's what I want. But there are times in which I'm distracted in life and it's not really what I want. But what I found in life is this. God, who wants us to be honest and truthful in the inmost being, is pleased with a prayer something like this. God, I don't really want to be righteous, but I want to want to. That's where I found myself at times, many times. Oh God, if I really wanted to be righteous, I think I'd be doing this differently. And I'm clearly not. So I must not want to be righteous or else I'd be doing this or that or acting this way or this way or speaking this way or not speaking. I should be holding my tongue when I'm not. If I really wanted righteousness. So if I told you that I want to be like you, I'd be lying. But I want to, want to, Give me the desire, O oh God. Would you give me the desire in my heart to want to be like you? And I assure you, my brothers and sisters, that is a prayer that the Heavenly Father will answer. Prayers of honesty, which says, I know you want it from me. I know that it's, it's what I ought to do. But, I'm not sure that I really desire that fully now. God, would you put that desire in my heart? And God will do that because that's what he wants from us. It's amazing to think God loves us that much that he wants us to have an exchange of righteousness with his son. He was pleased to have his son take your sin and mine so that through him we might become the righteousness of God. What an amazing love the Father has for us. Let's bow in prayer. And as we bow in prayer, I, you don't have to bow quite yet. That's okay. But as we bow in prayer, I just, I'm just i asking you to just be honest with the Lord, honest with yourself, honest with the Lord, wherever you are today. If Again, you may, you may just feel, be at the top of your spiritual game, as it were. Feel like, oh God, thank you. I dealt, you and I dealt with this last night. <laughs> you know, you may be here going, that's exciting because I just had this conversation with the Lord last night. Praise the Lord. It may be something that you, you agree with what I'm saying in, in a sense of saying, yeah, I can identify with that. Not agree with, but identify with what I'm saying. That, yeah, that's where I find myself. So I just want you to have, as we go to prayer, quiet time between you and the Lord, you be honest. Okay? Don't put on airs. Be truthful before your Heavenly Father because He already knows but you be truthful. Let's pray. Righteousness, righteousness is what I long for to be righteous, Lord. Righteousness Righteousness, righteousness is what you want from me. Take my heart, form it, O oh God. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will conform it to yours O oh Lord it's what we need Lord Jesus sing together. Take my heart and form it. Take my heart 
heart and form it. Take my mind and transform it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my will, conform it. Take my will, conform it to yours. To yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Again, take my heart and form it. Take my heart and form it. Take my mind, transform it. Take my mind, transform it. My will and conform. Take my will, conform it to yours, to yours, O oh Lord. To yours, to yours, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Father, thank you. From what I know of your scriptures, from what I've known of you as I've walked with you, as you've walked, you've called me by your name, you've, this is a true statement that you will transform us. You said, be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you will conform our hearts and our wills to be like yours. God, sometimes we feel like we've I know Apostle Paul talks about being, there's infants, like stop being infants and, and on the milk of the word, but be growing up in your faith. And sometimes we feel like we're back to infancy again at times. Sometimes we know we're eating solid food and thanking you for it. Oh God, we thank you that you're in the process. Even like Apostle Paul said to the Philippians, he said, I'm confident that he who began the good work in you he will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ Jesus. So my brothers and sisters, and we, we, Lord, we know that we're not condemned before you. You don't condemn us, but you, you sent your son to redeem us. You didn't send him into the world to condemn us. You sent him into, this, into the world to save us. We thank you, O oh Lord God, that you who know our hearts, you know, as, as the psalmist said, you know I'm dust. You know that I, how I'm formed. And yet you've placed your spirit within us and called us into a relationship with you. You have sent all, your only son to take our place at the cross so we don't have to pay the penalty of death for our own sins because Jesus paid it. Hallelujah. <laughs> that we can live before you, conformed to you and look forward to our days when we will see you face to face. Hallelujah. Lord, we pray for each other. Help us to encourage one another with these words. Help us to speak words of life to one another. Father, give us discernment. If our brothers and sisters are, are stumbling or are falling away, give us discernment and courage to correct one another in Christ that we might walk in holiness and righteousness before you. Oh, Lord, please give us courage that we might speak the word truth to our co-workers, to our neighbors, to our family members, that we might speak words of life as you have spoken to us. Hallelujah. Ambassadors of the Lord Jesus Christ, making your appeal of reconciliation to those around us. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for your promise. Thank you for all of your promises. Thank you for that scripture in, the, in the Corinthians. Thank you that we, through Jesus, can become the righteousness of God. Hallelujah. Father, I pray that you'd bless your children. Bless the flock that's in, under your care here at this church. May we go forth walking with our good shepherd, having ears that are attentive to your voice, hearts that are responsive to your spirit. And I thank you. I believe that you'll do that. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you for the reminder that Jesus is righteous and you call us into righteousness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, O God. Tell him, thank you, O God. Thank you for the truth of your word. Amen. In the name of Jesus, bless you. God bless you. Live a, live a, a life of righteousness. Live a life of honesty. Tell the Lord. He will hear your hearts. God bless you. Have a great week. Amen.